Hello, you ones. Welcome back. I'm Claire, and today we're going to talk some more about numbers and counting. Uh, you'll need paper and pencil. Uh, you might find it useful if you have uh, some dice or some counters. Uh, uh, you may have your scrapbook ready if you've been putting your notes in a scrapbook. Today we're going to learn some more about number lines. We did do a number line to 10 before. We're going to do some more about number lines. Um, we're going to place some numbers in the right spot. What was the word for that? Do you remember? Oh yes, locate. We're going to locate numbers on the number line. Have you been keeping track of the maths terms we've been using, the mathematical words that mathematicians use? I added one to our list yesterday because we talked about 10 frames. So I put 10 frame on the end of my list. Have you got a list like mine in the back of your book or on a piece of paper? Okay, let's, let's review some of the things that we've done already. Are you ready? I'm going to flash up some numbers and you're going to tell me what they are. You ready? Three, well done. Did you subitize? Did you just know how many? Have you been practicing? Well done. How about this one? Four. Excellent. Some people said double two. It is double two, isn't it? Double two is four. Good job. And that one? Did you see two and one more? Three? Or did you just see three? Either way, you're right. It's three. Oh, here's some of our lovely fish again. Did you subitize to two? You didn't even have to think. It's two. What about that? Lovely, four in a line, two and two more, or maybe you went one and three more is four. Doesn't matter, you said four. You subitized to four. <gasps> I was trying to trick you, you're right, it is four again. Three and one more is four, good job. Oh, I thought I'd catch you out, but no, it's four. Two and two more is four. The pattern doesn't matter, it's you recognizing how many that's important. That's what subitizing is, recognizing how many without having to count each one individually. Two, beautiful. Oh, there's our fish. Could you subitize to five, or to six? Silly me, it's six, isn't it? Three and three more, that's six. Or maybe you saw two, two and two, that's six. Any way at all, it's subitizing if you can tell how many without counting each one. Here's a number that I have written out to see do you remember the lesson we had on writing the numbers. Can you say this one? It was one of the tricky ones. Thirteen. Thirteen. Well done. Thirteen. Good job. Oh, this one's looking a bit untidy. Can you see 50 in there? The C Y 50? That's a bit tricky. One more. Oh, it's a subitizing. One. Good job. Now I wonder, have you been representing 10 on a 10 frame? Remember we talked about you can make 10 frames with pictures like this apple and we talked about playing that game. What can you see and what can I see? I'm going to do something tricky now. How many or can you see? 10. How many can I see? Zero. You're correct because that's one of our number bonds, isn't it? 10 and zero is 10. I can see zero apples and you can see 10 apples. But watch this. Here's a tricky thing. Right. It's a 10 frame. In this 10 frame, how many apples are there? Did you say 10 and one less, which is nine? Or did you just see five, a three and a one? Five and three is eight and one more makes nine. Did you say nine? Excellent. Now, what can I see? If you can see nine, what can I see? Oh, let's see if you're right. What could I see? Exactly, I saw one because nine and one makes 10. That's our 10 frame. We played with this a lot last week. Do you remember? Did you try it out over the time since I last saw you? 
Let's try it a different way this time. Are you ready? How many can you see? How many can you see? In our 10 frame, you can see three. Well done, you can see three. So what does that mean then? If you can see three, how many can I see? Hmm, what's 10 less that, what's three, what's 10 with three less? 10 with three less. Oh, are you counting backwards? 10, nine, eight, seven. You're right, I could see seven. There you go, seven on my side and three on yours in your 10 frame. Did you play with your 10 frame? Did you make one like this? You might want to make one if you haven't made one before, you might make one to after this lesson. We're going to do a game now. We're going to count, but every time we come to a five number, we're going to clap, okay? Do you remember our five numbers? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. So every time we come to one of those numbers, we're going to clap instead of saying the number. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31, 32, 33, 34, th oh, I almost said it, 35. Can you get higher than 35? Remember to clap on every five. That's a good game, isn't it? It's very helpful for remembering how to count in fives. So that was just reminding us that we know how to count in fives. We've learnt it and we will keep learning it and remembering it as we go on with our lessons. One way we learned to look at those five numbers was to look at a number line. Do you remember when we did the number line from zero to 10? Let's have a look at our number line. This time, instead of hanging them on the line like I did in the lesson that we did before, it got a bit squashy, didn't it? This time I've just drawn a number line on my chart. So help me with this one. If I put zero at the beginning and 10 at the end, where do I put five? Where does five go in here? Oh, you're right, in the middle. Can you tell where the middle is? Ooh, I think it's about here. What do you think? Is that where the five would go? Very good. So now we have zero, five, and 10. Very good, shall we go backwards? So uh, before five, there's four, and before four, there's three, and before three, there's two, and before two, there's one. Excellent. We can count forward. Zero, one, two, three, four, five on our number line. And we can put little dots here because remember the last time we had pegs? This time we'll just make little lines like that to show that they're hanging from the number line. This is a zero to 10 number line. What numbers am I missing here? What numbers am I missing? Very good, shall we count forwards from five? Excellent. So after five comes six, after six comes seven, after seven comes eight, after eight comes nine. Oh, I didn't space that out so very well. I didn't locate my numbers as well as I could have, but not too bad. If I make my dots go over a little bit further, it might work. Whoop, I'll go like that. Does that look better? <laughs> so what numbers do I have? I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Excellent. Shall we try doing one for between ten and twenty? Let's try doing one with ten and twenty. Now I remember we noticed something the last time. So I can nearly cheat. I can nearly cheat. It's not really cheating, but I can show you the pattern. We noticed this pattern the last time we did one. So we noticed that underneath one, there was the 10 number and the one, which is 11. We noticed that underneath the two, 
there was the two number and the ten. The one from the ten. Didn't we notice that last time? Underneath the three, there was a number three and ten more, thirteen. Do you remember that? We were able to see a pattern because the number pattern from zero to ten is repeated from ten to twenty with a ten added in. So there's that one with ten more, eleven. Two and ten more, twelve. Three and ten more, thirteen. Four and ten more, fourteen. What's going to be here then? Oh yeah, it's going to be a five and ten more, which is fifteen. Good job. Let me skip all the way up here. What's going to be underneath that one? That's right, it's going to be a nine with ten more, nineteen. Very good. Let's try this one. What's that one going to be down here on this chart? It's going to be an eight and ten more, eighteen. And then this one is going to be, what is that? It's a seven. It's going to be seven and one more, seventeen. And here we go. This one's going to be a six and one more, sixteen. There we go. We can see the pattern. It's one and ten more, two and ten more, three and ten more, four and ten more, five and ten more, six and ten more, seven and ten more, eight and ten more, nine and ten more. And this one, of course, is ten and ten more, twenty. So we can see from our number lines how the patterns of the numbers work. And we could do this in lots of ways. When we have drawn something, we can talk about where things are located. So we can see that the number 17 is located between 16 and 18. We can see that the number 17 is located between 15 and 20. So we can talk about location of numbers on a number line. I'd like you to make your own number lines now. So I'd like you to get pieces of paper or sticky notes and I want you to write one number on each sticky note or piece of paper. I would like you to write zero on the first one and then continue one number on each sticky note until you get to 20. You can pause the video now and do that. When you're done, come back to me. Okay, hi, you're back. You've got all your numbers on sticky notes. I've got mine on card because it's easier for me to manage here. So we've got all our numbers from zero to 20. Let's make our number line. Are you ready? This is going to be the first one. What's going to be the last one? That's right, 20. Do you think all my numbers zero to 20 will fit in that space? Hmm, I don't know. Will your numbers fit? Hmm, what number is going to be in the middle? from zero to 20, which number will be in the middle? Did you think about that? The number in the middle is going to be 10. Have you got 10 in your number line? On your number cards? I have 10. Now I'm going to put it in the middle. So zero to 20, the middle one is 10. Now, here's a tricky thing. Which card will come between zero and 10. Looking at your numbers, which card is going to come between zero and 10? Oh, who said five? That's very good. Five is between zero and 10. Which card is going to go between 10 and 20? Which one is halfway? Halfway between 10 and 20. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Oh, I might have to remember from our number line. Remember, if five is halfway between zero and 10, what was the number corresponding down here? Between 10 and 20, it's 15. Can you find your 15 card and put it halfway between 10 and 20? There we go. So now I've got zero, five, 10, 15, 20. Excellent. Ooh. Which number comes after zero, do you think? Hmm. Which number comes after zero? Aha, it's one, isn't it? And which number comes after one? 
It's too, oh, it's much easier now, isn't it? But do I have space? How can I put something in there? The number line needs to be much bigger, doesn't it? Because I've got so many numbers here. Do you know that mathematicians know the numbers, but they like to put them in the right spaces? So let's try and do it three. What do we have to do? Move it again. And four. And, oops, let's put that one on top. Five. Now we have the numbers zero to five. Mmm, what's going to come between 5 and 10? Which are the numbers between 5 and 10? Have you got your numbers ready? Yes. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Beautiful. I wonder, can you finish doing your number line at home. So, when you're finished, you're going to have all the numbers from 0 to 20. 0 to 20. Sometimes it's a good idea to do a, a line without any numbers on it first. So let's do our, our line here. Just do a straight line across your board. And we're going to do the number line from 0 to 20. Beautiful. Now, even if I don't put the numbers in there, I reckon you can tell me what number goes in a point. So, tell me what number do you think is at that point? There's no numbers on my number line except 0 and 20. How did you know? How do you know what's there? The number that comes between 0 and 20 is what? 10. I heard people say that very quickly. That's very good. The number between 0 and 20 is 10. If I put a little line here, would you be able to tell me what number would be there? I've got no numbers on this number line. How do you know what it is? Oh, you worked it out because you know between 0 and 10, the halfway number is 5. Excellent work. Very well done. Now. Tricky one. Between 10 and 20, I'm going to put a line right in the middle. What number do you think would be between 10 and 20 in the middle? Excellent. 15 is in there. Beautiful. Let's try a few tricky ones. Let's do the number right next to 20. What number do you think that would be? You're right. The number that becomes before 20 is 19. How about if I say to you, I'm going to look for the number that goes right here. What number could that be? Hmm, so zero is here. And I have to fit how many numbers before I get to five? I have to have one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. So four goes just before five. That's very good. Mathematicians like to use number lines even without numbers. I'm going to show you a more, an even more tricky one this time. See if you can work this out. Are you ready? This number line, remember I can draw a line any way I like. And I can start at any number I like. So this number line is starting at 90. Ooh, that's a big number, isn't it? 90. And it's going to go to 100. Wow. Now, what are the numbers between 90 and 100? Can you say them with me? 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. So, all of those numbers go between 90 and 100. Which one would be in the middle? Which one would be halfway between 90 and 100? Mm. Do you remember when I was counting there with you, we discovered there was 10 numbers. I was going 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 
100. So if there are 10 numbers, what's the middle number? The middle number is a 5. And remember we talked about that pattern, didn't we? And we said there's 5 and 90 more, which is 95. So the number between 90 and 100 on our number line is 95. Very tricky, isn't it? I wonder, could you figure out what is the next number after 90? After 90, it would be, you are right, 91. And that really means 1 and 90 more, 91. What about the number that would come after 95? 95. Yes, 96. Well done. So the number that would be here would be 96, which is really 6 and 90 more, 96. We can do number lines from any number, but when we put the numbers in, they have to be in sequence. That's why we've been learning to say the numbers in sequence from 0 to 100. I'm going to show you a really tricky number line this time. Let's see if you can figure out how to use this number line. So remember, you just draw a straight line. I'm starting at 0 and I'm finishing at 100. That's a big number line, isn't it? But instead of putting in all the numbers one at a time, I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, what's next? You're right, 40, 50, whoa, is that about halfway between 0 and 100? I'm at 50, is that about halfway? Not too bad, eh? Let's try 60, 70, what's next? What's next? 80, well done. And the last one before we get to 100 is 90. Can you see? Oh, I forgot the zero there, thank you. So now I've got all the numbers from zero to 100 in tens. Do you remember we counted in tens before? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Isn't that very handy? You can make a number line in tens as well. You might like to do that after this lesson. I'm going to ask you something really tricky though before we go. Okay, so you'll notice that I have put in some little lines between 0 and 10. What do you think they could stand for? Yes, you're right, there are all those numbers in between 0 and 10. What could they be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. And here I've put them between 10 and 20. What could they be? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you can see I can use a number line with the tens numbers and you would know the numbers between the tens just by the little lines. I wouldn't have to write out all the numbers on the number line. Just 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And you could locate any number just by knowing that there are nine numbers between each one of those tens. After this lesson, you can make your own number line using post-it notes or with an actual clothesline and pegs, you could peg them onto a line, but you really can just stick them to the table because it's a lot easier to do that with post-it notes. And lines and pegs, as we know, can get a bit tricky when you're trying to put the right numbers in the right location. I will see you the next time. Bye-bye.